Hey everyone, uh, I'd like to talk about uh, the morphing effect, which is uh, one of the uh, difficult visual effects in 3D. Uh, in today's lesson, I'd like to talk about the VDB morphing effect. But in the past lessons, uh, I was talking about different type of uh, morphing effect, which uh, start with the very basic uh, the transformation uh, from one object to another, and then adding uh, some uh, control uh, objects, uh, some uh, noises, uh, gradients to uh, to enhance uh, our morphing effect, and also using um, uh, attributes to also uh, enhance. Uh, the the effects the transformation from one to uh, another and um, also using uh, particles and splines to be able to control the direction of the uh, blending geometry okay um, but today um, I I think um, it also would be uh, nice to uh, to have the VDB morphing uh, effect at least to know how it works uh, and uh, in my opinion it's very slow uh, it's difficult to control uh, and uh, and I think there is uh, uh, better ways to actually um, to achieve the same result uh, as we will see now okay so I'm starting with the basic uh, morphing effect which is simply uh, morph from one to another and how it works so here we have uh, two uh, VDBs that we'd like to morph and uh, here's a morphing node and uh, here I have this time step uh, parameter which uh, which I'm animating so it starts with zero and uh, ending with seven in my case um, so sometimes in, in in your case we probably might have some complex geometry uh, you might you might want to increase to fully uh, transform from one to another okay so this value may be changed from uh, from case to case okay and that's it this is one of the simple, simplest, simplistic uh, transformation. Uh, um, the, uh, the downside of the morphing effect is that you, if you will uh, press your uh, voxels, uh, it will take a long time to, uh, to apply the effect and caching also takes time but uh, this one is a, a very basic result uh, another thing that we have uh, here we have our alpha mask so we can add some uh, density to uh, to be able to control our transformation so in the second scenario I'm having the same uh, two geometries VDBs that I'd like to uh, to morph so as you see um, it's taking time so uh, here I have uh, the sphere which uh, covers all the uh, geometry and I'm converting it to a density volume and then I'm applying some noise to the density to get some uh, noise effect and I'm animating the amplitude parameter to to feel feel the this shape okay which will which uh, now will we use as a mask so here we have and if I simply scrub
so as you see it's taking time let's see uh, but uh, still I have quite a low risk uh, uh, geometry uh, VDB uh, and it's a, it takes time so uh, I will simply run the cache so as you see uh, I'm controlling I'm, I'm morphing it by using uh, the the extra uh, geometry which has density okay this way you can also have some uh, you can you can have some good results but as I said it takes it takes time to cache uh, and especially if you have some complex geometry with the high uh, res uh, VDBs uh, it, it will take um, a lot of time to, to compute okay uh, another thing I'd like to uh, to pay attention is that as you see uh, where objects are uh, not kind of matching properly they can have this kind of a, as you see this rubber toy is like simply just disappearing which is not desirable okay which, uh, which looks bad so um, the solution to this you you might want to uh, scale your uh, geometry so it would sit in the in the in the uh, in the first geometry so this way uh, you could solve the problem but uh, uh, another way is just uh, add some uh, additional uh, effect just to fill this uh, gap okay so what I'm doing in in this case I'm I'm having this uh, filled uh, sphere with points and I'm doing some animation so as you see So as you see, I ha I'm having this uh, gradient that eats all the points. This way, I will use it as a transition. So I'm converting them to VDBs, uh, some tweaking, and then converting it back to volume, which I'm using here. Okay, and I'm also uh, using the uh, these VDBs as the as a cutter so I'm I'm adding the time warp where I'm uh, just reversing my animation and I'm adding some time shift just to uh, fit the whole uh, transition effect okay this way I'm okay so and also I'd like to um, uh, say that VDB combine as you see works much faster than VDB morph so as you see I'm starting eating up the rubber toy and then I'm simply uh, combining uh, this both the major effect and the additional tweak together to to get the final result and again and here's the final result so as you see the the rubber toy legs is not popping out now it simply goes away okay which is uh, much preferable okay and the last one uh, which uh, I would prefer over, over those uh, uh, over these versions is probably simply use the VDB combine which is much faster and also gives you a nice uh, control of uh, of your transitions okay so I'm using the same uh, VDB that I've animated okay 
So here I'm using it uh, straight. I want this uh, peak head to appear, but the same value, uh, which is the reverse of the same VDP animation. I would like to uh, shrink the rubber toy. And then I am combining them both, and this way I'm starting with the rubber toy. And slowly transform it into uh, a big head and the final result. As you see, almost the same, and plus to this, you can uh, have more resolution to your VDB uh, geometries and much much faster to uh, simulate. Okay. So yeah, uh, I think it's also good to know how uh, everything works. I also uh, and also uh, kind of uh, enhance, uh, if possible, to get a better results. So um, uh, as you see, so there is various method that you can use VDBs to transform your geometries from one to another, and uh, yeah. Um, well, I hope you liked the, um, the lesson, and if you find it useful, uh, please subscribe. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, goodbye and good luck.